Oh, I promised a video about cats. So I'm just gonna really quick, we just went for a walk. It was amazing! We had to like cross the street a few times so that we kept the physical distancing, social distancing from people. A lot of people home. We skipped the one neighborhood we normally walk through because there was a lot of people walking around. Um, but we came home to this pretty little baby who I just woke up, she's taking a nap. Um, and we woke up to this baby. Also on the couch taking a nap. So little black, little black cat is Dax. She is, Dax is 10 years old. She likes tuna and long cuddles in the chair. This is Data. Data is, as we said, turning eight this year. He's a viral young man. He likes a good arm hump and loves to have his chin scratched. And Miss Janeway just pranced over because we were ignoring her, so I'm gonna go find her because she left again. I walked in on her in the bedroom, came back from our walk to change, and there was Janeway doing cat exercises. She was like all contorted on the bed doing like cat yoga, I swear. So, Janeway, say hi. Say hi, Janeway. Say hi. Can you see all the stuff in my kitchen that's like from my dad's house? Um, Janeway is a curvy, a very curvaceous three and a half year old who likes good dry food and hates wet food. So those are my babies. Um, we got them the order of Data in 2016 and Dax in 2017 and Janeway 2019. That doesn't make sense. It's like we skipped a year. Um, I thought we got one like every fall for like, oh no, I think we had data for two years because he was very, um, he was the one that was like, I don't have any other cats. Um, we will only have three. I'm gonna leave the living room because there's a movie on. Three is the like maximum amount of cats we can have in the city that we live in by, by the bylaws. Um, so there's that. Um, and I'm all for keeping with the bylaws. Look at this. Look at this. Being inside is not conducive to... I think it's because we get lazy when we don't have to go anywhere, so you don't keep up with your, like, beauty regime, and your face breaks out. And I'm a, like, popper. Sorry. My bestie's, like, an esthetician, so don't tell her. The bestie whose birthday is today. Happy birthday again, Holly! I don't know if she watches these, but... Let's see, what else is in my apartment? Look at this. Those are cases and cases of chocolate mint girl guide cookies. So what had happened was, is I ordered like 400 because I've taken girls on an international trip and then a bunch of them had dropped. So we actually didn't need to do any more fundraising. So we needed to sell cookies. So we gave them away to other units who needed to, to needed them to sell to raise money because that's how we pay for a lot of the stuff we do with the kids. And I had kept some for the spring for, um, I just, they got returned to me and I didn't find a home for them. And I knew that in the spring, a lot of the time, if the cookies, they, the, the shelf life is the best, the freshness guaranteed, it's um, just the date that the, they're guaranteed to taste the way we want them to taste. It's not a best before or an expiry, it's a freshness guarantee. Um, that oh, There's usually a lot of people in the spring looking for them, so I wasn't worried. And what happened was that we have this pandemic. So uh, halfway through March, obviously they shut everything down. So half the country got girl, spring Girl Guide cookies and the other half has not. And Girl Guides is doing this amazing thing out uh, west in Alberta. West. Uh, there was this really great Canadian tire in a small town and they started selling the local girls Girl Guide cookies for them because the girls can't go door to door. Uh, girl Guides the, in Ontario in Canada, pretty much the day that uh, Ontario shut down their schools right before March break, said there was going to be a two-week extension. Um, within 48 hours, Girl Guides had done the same. And so we're f we're definitely not opening until August 16th. We might open August, 16th, uh, August April, April 16th. We will see. Obviously, they're playing it by ear. But um, this really, really great thing is that Canadian Tire and a bunch of other retailers are doing this amazing thing all across Canada. They're partnering with Girl Guides. And they're going to sell a lot of these. We have so many cookies, uh, and it is our it is our main income. It's why we can. I think it's like right now the cost is like a dollar, uh, a dollar, one hundred eighty-five ish. I haven't registered a child 
so I'm not 100% up to date for like for a year and there's extra costs and the volunteers like me we spend a lot of a lot of us spend money our own money on stuff but we spend a lot of time budgeting and doing fundraising and selling cookies and uh, it's broken down differently in every province but we we try not to charge the families um, a lot of stuff that we want to do with the kids they, they there is an extra charge but we keep all of those costs down and the costs for crafts and we have a lot of subsidies for low-income families so we have a lot of members especially in the area I live so in the Niagara area in Canada we have about 20% of our membership are girls on subsidy. They're girls who consistently, we're consistently around 20% for the last decade or so of girls whose families are low income and they need assistance for part of or all of the registration fee. We have subsidies for summer camp. We have subsidies now for unit camp. So if your group goes camping throughout the year, you can get a, you know, they can get a subsidy. Um, we have subsidies for uniform. We have these really great benefits across in Ontario. Um, if you sell so many cookies and you're doing an international trip, you get an extra bonus amount of money from the cookie sales. Um, in other provinces, they're broken down. Um, they have more councils, like by city and area. Um, they're called districts, divisions, areas, and provincial. Um, in Ontario, we have, they're called administrative communities, and we're just all under Ontario Provincial Council. And so everything in Ontario is the same, whereas if you go to another province, area and district could vary. But anyway, so it's really, really great. So if you see cookies in a store, I don't know that this is going to be permanent. This is our how we're dealing with the COVID. I know I said I'm going to talk about cats. Now I'm talking about girl guides because those are like the two biggest things in my life is cats and girl guides. I'm kind of very sad because I help out with like a group of five-year-olds and I don't get to go play with the five-year-olds anymore. Um, because we don't have meetings and my teenagers aren't answering me back. I work with like 15 and 16 year old girls and uh, they haven't texted me back. <laughs> they're busy in their time off sleeping and probably freaking out about school because they're missing a lot of school and it's very stressful for kids in high school right now to be missing because I, as much as I think it's adjustable, we've put so much on them about how important high school and grades are that they pretty much to a lot of them it's like oh my god our like career is over and our future is over it's not it'll work out um i had strikes in grade school i had strikes in university and college where i missed months or two months of school so it is doable and they they will work it out but this is different and this is this is a, a different as across the board so everyone's gonna have to make adjustments but um if you see cookies buy them uh if you see people selling them uh, some parents already have their cookies and they can do what they want and like they're we're not supposed to as groups like as our as our volunteers we're not supposed to coordinate sales but how people sell their cookies as long as they're being safe so I know there's a lot of people who question that so yeah I have chocolate mint cookies that uh, will actually go to a food bank uh, food banks if you did not know can distribute a lot of foods uh, within a year of their actual expiry dates. So even if you have expired food a lot of the time, food banks can, as long as they distribute it soon. I mean, preferably you don't give them expired food. Uh, but there are a lot, depends on the product. Things that like cookies and crackers are different than canned goods because of the oil in the cookies and crackers. It's what goes bad that makes them taste funny. If you ever open an old box of crackers, I've, I've opened an old box of crackers and found it smelled like petrol oil. That's what it is, and don't eat the petrol oil crackers. <laughs> anyway, um, some food banks are still giving out food. Uh, some are still receiving food. So if you have the time and you have a little extra, you're cleaning your kitchen, you find a bunch of food you're not gonna eat, even though you know we're kind of short. Um, I think I just had food on my mouth, or is that just like, look at these teeth, they're terrible. Uh, you know what, you're, even if you're at the grocery store and, and there's a sale or you're picking stuff up, uh, there are a lot of people who can't afford to go to the grocery store and do a big shop normally. And what's happening now is they're going to go and there's not going to be enough variety of things. And we're going to have a whole lot more people who, even though they're getting EI, my husband's kissing me. He wants kisses back. Even though they're getting EI, they're not it's gonna be hard it's gonna be hard so if you can if you have the ability to 
pick up something for someone. My mother-in-law picked us up toilet paper because she's super nice and awesome. She got us two things of toilet paper and I was like, yes. Um, someone's trying to call me, so bye everybody.